In the last year, Ace Attack Sim Sports dropped into sim racing like a bomb by bringing the Invictus, an hydraulic pedal set. But at 849 euro or 1200 with a clutch, that's too rich for most sim racers. So they brought this. The Ace Attack Forte. Is it Fort? Forte? A new pedal set that is very similar with the Invictus looks wise, but with a different brake system. And with them, they want to appeal to a much larger audience. But can they? Let's find out. Before going to the review, the Forte pedals were sent by Ace Attack for review. They have no control over this review and do not know the result of it. So when the Invictus came into play, they were basically quite a big deal. They were the first product of Ace Attack into the sim racing market, a company mostly known for their AI coolers. They looked completely different from anything out there and as an hydraulic set, it was more affordable than most hydraulics. Still, at 849 euro for a two pedal set and 1200 with the clutch, it's still more expensive than most can justify to their spouses. So enter the Azitek Forte. At 449 euros for two pedals and 700 with the clutch, they'll be aiming themselves at the likes of the Oisingveld Sprints. So this way, the spouse can be a little bit happier. I don't mean they'll be totally happy because they're still at least 449, but you get the picture. Subscribe for more tips. So as they are not hydraulics, they went to the load cell way that supposedly is set up to, and I quote, Forte, while not hydraulic, will still offer you the hydraulic sensation of a fully depressed brake pedal where you can still pressure modulate trail brake thanks to the two-stage system inspired by the Invicta. I'm not too sure about the hydraulic sensation, but this is where Ace Attack went to. Not only that, they call it affordable Invictus. Ace Attack has not sent the clutch for review, so I can only center this video with the base pedal set. Anyways, let's talk specs for a bit. The Fortes have an anodized aluminum construction with some polished surface. Most importantly, a sock-friendly pedal face, a USB-C connector, 16-bit electronics with 16-bit hull sensors. Ace Attack is not indicated what is the rating of the load cell, but they say it's going to be sensing up to 180 kg of force applied in the brake pedal. The load cell is in a cylinder. The brake pedal can be made sort of a two-stage system and has interchangeable elastomers. The elastomers that come are 70, 80 and 90 short. The pedals offer some adjustability, a little more limited than in other pedals, and of course there is the all-important LED strip. In my opinion, the way they look and they seem set up there closer to V3s than the Oisingveld sprints they want to compete with, as the heel rest is the structure where the pedals are integrated. Then it makes them impossible to move to side to side, and the load cell and elastomers are in a cylinder. These are similarities to the V3s, but there are some important differences as well. The Forte's design is unique. It holds this mix of looks that is built for sim racing with the pedal base, but at the same time, it feels like it is tasked to be on the car with the pedal structure sticking out. The pedal base is rigid, has a heel plate at the front with the Forte logo, below the rest, the addressable LED that is changeable in the software. If you like unicorn RGB poop, you'll be disappointed though. So looks wise, we have something truly original. To fix the pedals, there are four M6 bolt holes. This is only the two pedal sets, but the connector for the clutch is sitting at the bottom. You'll attach the clutch to the main wheelbase and then you connect everything together. While we are at it, the bottom is covered by a rubberized film. It's not a metal piece. The pedal structure has a triangle designed to be super sturdy. Apparently, it's able to hold 200 kilos of force because of it. So if you are squatting, these pedals are for you. The pedals have some adjustment, the sock friendly pedal face is not really, the adjustments are very limited there. But on the rest of the pedal, all the adjustments are toolless, which means that basically adjustments can be made on a fly, including when the pedals are bolted on a rig. As long as you have some space to move around, they shouldn't be an issue. This for me is a fantastic improvement, as pedal adjustments sometimes were an absolute pain in the back, quite literally too. Both pedals have a torsion spring at the bottom. This allows for a little more stability and for the brake pedal to reset. When the brake pedal is disconnected from the elastomer, the brake pedal will reset back to the starting position. The adjustment possibilities are signaled by the orange anodized aluminum knobs. So with this, the pedal angle or starting point can be adjusted. The throttle pedal movement, the throttle spring preload and the brake pedal two-stage system as well. The adjustments are rather simple. Rotate the locking nut and then adjust the top screw. This will limit or add movement to the pedals. 
at the back the spring can have a little preload the spring rate is on the softer side ace attack is currently working on a spring pedal pack as of this moment no other springs are available for the ace attack for this the throttle movement is really smooth and satisfying the brake pedal is of course the centerpiece it has a cylinder called mlp MLCPC or Mechanical Load Cell Powered Cylinder. Let's leave acronyms aside for a moment. What this system is, is no more, no less than a cylinder with a large elastomer inside. You press the pedal and the brake shaft presses the elastomer which will have some movement. What the cylinder does is to avoid the elastomer to over expand. This supposedly will retain the reliability of the elastomer and the elastomer will keep the same rating over the years. The orange knobs will provide a two-stage system that can be dialed down from zero if the top piece is screwed all the way down, up to 20% of movement of the brake pedal. Supposedly, this effect is to mimic the distance between the brake pad and the disc and the superficial force that can be applied to the disc before fully locking it. The elastomer can be changed with no tools, there's just a clamp on the side. It's really easy to remove it from the shaft, then just slide the pin back, the elastomer will be at the bottom and can be removed. This setup allows for a very small movement of the elastomer and brake pedal if you want, or you can increase the movement by adding that first stage. I was sent 3 elastomers from 70 to 90 shore, in the future Ace Attack will provide a set with multiple elastomers. Both assemblies are quite sturdy, there is very little movement side to side on the pedals. The build is excellent. There is some to talk about on the way this brake pedal is customized. There is a two-step brake system, and this is very hit and miss for me. There's the possibility to run the preload nut flush with the elastomer if you rotate this, and then you'll have basically no engagement. Even if you put some force in it, it will be very hard to move, or you can loosen this same preload nut, and then with very little force, you can move the pedal. There's an area close to the top where there'll be an activation of the load cell without providing much force, for example, how it is. And this will be providing about 20% of the load cell activation. And if you just start to close the nut a bit, there will be a massive drop off until the effect is zero, even with some movement. I wish this was more uniform, but anyways, if you want to dial in some sort of pedal movement to have some sort of trail braking, this is a way to go. Both assemblies are quite sturdy. There is very little movement side to side on the pedals. The build is excellent. The installation to the rig is quite simple. It's just those four bolts. I just wish the USB-C didn't need to do a backflip, but there are definitely much worse pedals with connector accessibility. Still, I think that the cable management could be a little better overall in these pedals. Before going to the rig and talk about how these pedals feel, let's talk about the software. It's called Raceub. It's fairly simple and straightforward software for the Fortez and Invictus. On the side, you'll see something like in the pit, probably in the future, s -Attack will bring something else into the sim racing market. Choosing the pedals on the first page, dead zones can be added. The pedals should be pre-calibrated with a small dead zone from factory. On the second page, and most interestingly, this software allows for pedal maps. A customized map can be created or a pre-built one can be used. This could be useful, for example, with lowering or increasing brake force versus what is read on the game to lower, for example, the force of the load cell. I wish there would be a quick bar to level up the load cell force quickly without any other adjustments in the curves. Lastly, the all-important LED tab. There are many color choices, but sadly, no unicorn poop. Ace Attack, please make that real and please do name it unicorn poop. We're gonna toss it now in the rig, and in my opinion, before starting, I think it's a very interesting piece. It is similar to some pedals that I've tried. After all, you can only do so much with the elastomers, but at the same time, it's quite distinct. I think the pedals are comfortable to use. It has an excellent throw, a bit on the soft side on the throttle, but at the moment we can't really fix that. All the pedal actuation is smooth and precise, though on the throttle it is not silent because it's audible the bump stop at the end. The brake is of course all the rage about these pedals where it's said to have a lot in common with the Invictus. Well, I have not tried the Invictus so I can't really comment on them, but the closest I can probably describe this set to would be the Fanatec b on lots of protein and hypertrophy exercise regimen. To the point it becomes not very similar to the Fanatec v but more similar to the bigger elastomer equipped pedals, so it's more or less of a hybrid. 
there is a definite feel when the pedal is overpressed. The cylinder is doing its thing to keep the elastomer contained. The pedal sensation between being a one stage and a two stage system is also significantly noticeable. The bigger the second stage, the messier it gets in the return movement. So honestly, don't overdo it, but try it out because there might be something there for you. Performance wise, the pedal set is really faultless. I get the performance I'm accustomed to, though I would like more of a progressive second stage like I can dial in with the V-Trees or I could do, for example, in Ogiro Simpro XRs, which had quite a stiff spring. Even with the second stage, the brake pedal has a lot of feeling that you are running into the elastomer instead of something really progressive. Of course, it's purely personal, but it's something to notice and to mention to you. Even so, it is a super precise braking feel with a very excellent detail and honestly, it's super familiar. The pedal assembly is rigid with all the force being put through. It doesn't really miss a beat, it is stable, it is rigid, it's really easy to modulate your braking. For the pedal faces, sure, they can be used with socks, it's super easy to glide over the faces, but using these faces with socks will require to lower substantially the strength of the load cell, otherwise your feet will definitely feel the pain. As a last point, I found out that the load cell is not consistent between elastomers. If you use the softer elastomer, you don't need to use as much force to activate it fully as you do with the harder one. I reinserted elastomers to check if this would continue and there was no change. The Azitec Fortes are an excellent addition to the choices out there for pedals. Sadly, I can't compare them with the sprints to make a full recommendation, but as load cell pedals go, it's really hard to go much better than this. It has a strategy construction, a excellent load cell cylinder design with some interesting features. At 449 or around 700 with the clutch, it's not a bad choice for paddles of this caliber. I can see a lot of engineering here that is worthwhile to dosh. They call it affordable Invictus, I call them a solid entry to the sim racing roster and a pedal set that you should consider if you are buying. If you enjoyed the video, press like and subscribe to check the video on your left as well. It might be an option at around the prices of the Ace Attack Vortex.